Hi, it's Tom from ZeroToFinals.com. This video is going to explain how we use the short synactin test to diagnose primary adrenal insufficiency or Addison's disease. Primary adrenal insufficiency is where the adrenal glands themselves are damaged and not able to produce enough cortisol to adequately serve the body. Now if we look at the HPA axis itself, the hypothalamus produces corticotrophin releasing hormone which stimulates the anterior pituitary gland to release adrenocorticotrophic hormone, which in turn stimulates the adrenal gland to produce cortisol. Cortisol then feeds back to the hypothalamus and the anterior pituitary gland to tell them to back off releasing the stimulatory hormones because there's plenty of cortisol in the body already. So by doing this, it produces negative feedback, which in turn helps to settle down how much cortisol is being produced. There are two causes of a low blood cortisol. The first is primary adrenal insufficiency, or Addison's disease. And this refers to when the, the adrenal gland itself is inadequately producing cortisol, usually in response to some sort of damage. The second is secondary adrenal insufficiency and this is where there's a lack of stimulation of the adrenal glands by the adrenocorticotrophic hormone or ACTH. This is usually in response to damage to the pituitary gland so it's not producing enough ACTH. To test for primary adrenal insufficiency we use the short synactin test. Ideally this test should be done early in the morning it involves giving artificial ACTH called synactin and this is used to try to stimulate the adrenal gland to produce cortisol. So what we do is we measure cortisol at baseline at the same time as giving the synactin and then we measure the cortisol again at 30 minutes and at 60 minutes and we would expect in a healthy adrenal gland the level of cortisol will at least double in response to that synactin. If it doesn't double, then there's likely to be damage to the adrenal glands, which is stopping them from producing an adequate response. So we can diagnose primary adrenal insufficiency. We can also measure ACTH to investigate adrenal insufficiency. And this is how you would interpret the results. In primary adrenal insufficiency, the adrenal gland is not producing cortisol. So you end up with a low cortisol level. And because the cortisol is low, you don't get the negative feedback to the hypothalamus and anterior pituitary. So you would expect the anterior pituitary to produce extra ACTH to try to stimulate the adrenal gland. So you would find a high ACTH level. In secondary adrenal insufficiency, it's the pathology in the anterior pituitary that's causing a low level of ACTH and then low stimulation of the adrenal gland, so low cortisol. So thanks for watching this video, I hope it's been helpful. If you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe for more videos like this. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments section and I'll try to get back to you and answer them for you. Don't forget to check out all the other resources on the Zero to Finals website where there's loads of medical notes, illustrations, videos, quizzes and a blog. And uh, I'll see you in the next video.